everyone, Candy here. So back when I first started customizing dolls, my very first idea for a series was Seasonal Fairies. Here's the concept I did, but for the life of me, I could never find a seamstress to make the dresses I designed. I gave up until recently because I've been working a lot with epoxy clay these days and I felt like I finally had enough skill to tackle these ladies again. Only this time I said, screw the dresses, these ladies can wear trees. I started off with spring and for those who follow my Instagram, you guys all saw the progress pics and everything. If I had the time to make a video for all four, I absolutely would have. but. I ended up spending less than a week on each of these girls, and making videos for all four of them would have taken so much time in comparison. I just decided to show my process with one, Summer. Okay, let's get started because this is going to be a long video. <laughs> I just kind of went with it for all of these girls, jumping in with two-part epoxy clay and hoping a good design comes out of it. I knew I wanted Summer to be kind of growing out of the ground, or maybe dressed in a tree? <laughs> I don't know. Let's see how this turns out. Tree textures are actually pretty easy to do with clay. I just slabbed a chunk of epoxy onto the doll and just started shaping in a tree texture. I didn't want her completely bark textured though, so I made sure to have her show some skin and make it look more like the tree is wrapped around her. I put her on her base pretty early in the process. All of her joints are glued at this point because she's going to be more of a statue. I used super glue and clay to hold her onto the base, and then I got to work making a dirt floor, I guess, for all the flowers and grass I planned to toss on there. Oh my god, I used so much epoxy clay for this project. <laughs> I'm gonna have to buy some more soon. I used my clay molding tool thingy to give the ground texture. Most of it's going to be covered by the end, but oh well. Using craft foam, I cut it so it will wrap around her at the base, and then I cut each grass strand individually. Then I glue it to the base. I know I'm hopping back and forth a lot, but while the glue dries on the base, I get back to adding more tree texture to the body. It takes a while to build up the clay because I want the previous layer to dry first, and that takes a few hours, sometimes even overnight. I'm also really liking these new tools I got for shaping the clay. I don't know why I used my X-Acto and hairpins for this for so long.
final layer of her tree look is vines and leaves. It was a little tricky because I still kind of am new at working with clay, but I think it turned out alright. Okay, while that dries, I get back to the base. Obviously, this simple craft foam grass won't do. It needs more depth. So I cut out more strands of grass individually and attach them using Mod Podge. <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> okay, so craft foam is easily shaped with a little heat. So I decided, hell, I have a lighter, why not? <laughs> It would appear using it on very thin strands of foam, well, it sets it on fire. The pyro in me was delighted, but I also didn't want to set the house on fire, so eventually I went with a hair curler to warm up the foam. Once my former fire hazard has dried, I get to painting it with acrylic. First, a base coat. And then a base coat on the, uh, the tree she's wearing. Oh, this part is so satisfying. It's so great seeing all the sculpt work turn into something fun. After all the base colors are done, I go in with a very watered down wash to fill in all the crevices. After that, I use a lighter color and dry brush the most outer parts to give it a more three-dimensional effect. You want to use a teensy amount of paint for this, just let it dry and then go over it again until it's the way you want. I think it's starting to finally get there. It's a little messy, but I'll clean that up later.
For the smaller parts uh, that I wanted a little extra detail for, I just take a small brush and, you know, just go to town. Okay, grass time. Since this household has been painting Warhammer models for probably over a decade, we aren't wanting for things like grass flock. It's an easy process of just adding some glue, then sprinkling flock over it. Take as many layers as you need to get the fullness you desire. I wanted to add some to her body as well to, you know, make it look kind of like moss is growing on the bark. Oh man, I was so excited for this part. I wanted to practically smother her base with flowers, since you know, summer is the season for overgrowth. Then it's glitter time. She's a fairy, so she's got to have some fairy dust on her. These adorable paper butterflies were purchased on Etsy from Garden Aura. I've been itching to use them and this was the perfect project. For the wings, I attach some clay to the back and just kind of shove them in there. I'll be covering everything with more sparkly, so I wasn't too worried here. I also bought these wings on Etsy. The creator is Mad March Moon, if you guys want to check her out. While that dries, I finally get to work on the face up. As per usual, I clean the original face off with acetone, spray with Mr. Super Clear, and get to work in penciling everything in. 
Since her body is so busy, I wanted to do a very simple face to compliment it. Yes, I know I should have removed all the hair from her head, but once I'm done, you won't even see it, I swear. After the pencil work is done, I use pastels to contour and blush. I do want to mention that anytime I'm happy with what I've done, I spray the head again with Mr. Super Clear to seal everything in. Drawing in the eyelashes is so satisfying. I'm not going to do much detail on her pupils because I'll be adding gem accents to them later. I think she's starting to get there. Okay, once the face is done, I add small diamond gems to her eyes. Don't they just pop now? Now it's time for the eyelashes. As always, I use super glue to apply them. They just stay put better that way. Once that dries, I add gloss to the eyes and lips.
Then I add some glitter to her cheeks and wings before I get to work on her hair. I wanted her to have super long hair because, again, overgrowth. I'm a little short on the hair color I wanted to use as the main shade, so I'm adding a little blonde to the back, you know, to take up some space. I use Mod Podge and just glue it directly under her head. It's, it's, it's so ugly, I know. But the end result is always lovely, in my opinion at least. I think it's good to see the uglier side of doll making sometimes, in case you feel like what you're doing isn't looking so good. See? You wouldn't even know the horrors that were the application. Okay, so I didn't want to do much styling with her hair, but I did want to add a little bit of hair, you know, just flip back because... I hold the hair back with super glue. Just don't worry, it'll get covered with flowers. And here we go! I've been itching to use these sunflowers for a doll for a while. I apply using more super glue, and I also add a little accent flower to really bring it together. And with that, I think she's done. This was so much fun. I wish I did videos on the whole set, but all I can do now is show photos of all the finished products. I gotta admit, I really love making the dolls more like sculptures. It's just really fun making these elaborate bases too. Anywho, thanks for sticking with me through this long video. I really hope you guys enjoyed watching, and if you did, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.